calories in versus calories out and why you should stop counting calories even if you're trying to lose weight are you ready for it let's get into it The golden rule of weight loss. Calories in versus calories out. Basically, eat more calories than you burn and you'll gain weight, or eat less calories than you burn and you'll lose weight. And from the countless studies and books out there in the interwebs, you would think that this method is foolproof. Only that it's not. Because these outdated rules have turned us into obsessive worriers, fat-fearing, calorie-counting, treadmill slaves. I mean, what the literal f By the way, did you know that the treadmill was actually invented in the 1800s as a way to punish prisoners in jail? I'll say no more. I feel like we need a maths degree just to work out what we should be eating in a day. Are you telling me that our ancestors counted macros so that they could stay in shape? Or do you think that tribes like the Maasai in Africa worry about overshooting their calories for the day because they might get fat? By the way, they actually eat a really calorie dense diet of raw milk and blood and meat. And they actually stay really lean and muscular and have zero cases of obesity or diabetes. What is this sorcery? I mean, really, do you think that your great grandma weighed her food before she cooked it in a time when obesity and heart disease did not exist? No, she did not. And if she saw you doing that today, she would think you were nuts. <gasps> This is a modern day affliction. And if we just ate a species appropriate diet of healthy whole foods that are nutrient dense, just like our ancestors did, we wouldn't have to worry about counting calories. So many women are torturing themselves, just encouraging unhealthy relationships with their food and their exercise, and damaging their body image and mental well being. And then you get the weight loss companies and the supplement companies who are just perpetuating this confusion with this whole calories in, calories out business to prey on your pain points, offering you quick fixes with clever marketing so that they can just line their fat wallets with your hard earned cash. And all this does is keep you in this vicious cycle of yo-yoing with your weight and your health. It's time to wake up. Now look, before I get trolled in my comments, I am not saying that calories don't count, okay? Anyone who says that is an idiot. But equally, anyone who says that it's only about calories is also an idiot. But I am talking to my subscribers who generally fall under the category of female who have crash dieted for most of their life, whose metabolic health isn't so great, whose muscle mass is way lower and body fat levels tend to be way higher, who have tried the starvation diets and the calorie counting and the over exercising, doing way too much cardio and just not getting results. If that's you, and you are really confused about the whole calorie thing and what calories you should be on, this video is for you, keep watching. One thing to point out between the sexes, and this makes a big difference, females have lower testosterone and higher estrogen. That's gonna have a massive effect on your body composition. That means we can't build as much muscle as males can, and we tend to store a lot more body fat than males do. That's just how we're built. So let's take a look at this golden rule of weight loss and why it's so flawed but more so why getting obsessed over the numbers is completely a waste of time. Calculating calories in. Bear with me, we're gonna go through a little bit of a maths lesson here. I hope you've got your clever thinking caps on. <clears throat> Ready? Let's do this. So we need to know how many calories there are in a particular food so that we can add it up to our total intake for the day and know how much energy we're taking in, right? Okay, so take a banana as an example. Is it ripe? 
or is it underripe? Because if it's ripe, it's going to have a much higher sugar content. And if it's underripe, it's gonna be mostly starch. Big difference in calories there. Is it cooked or is it raw? Not that, I don't know why you would cook a banana, but I don't know, maybe you do. Well, is it baked for two hours or did you fry it for two minutes? Because again, that's gonna skew your calculations. Same goes for a piece of steak, okay? One's marbled with lots of fat, one isn't so marbled. Well, how do you know what the exact protein to fat ratio is of each steak? Uh -huh. That's right, you can't. Because the textbooks give you a generic roundabout number for each specific whole food. But they don't take into account all of these factors. And so there's zero accuracy in it. Say you are on a 1500 calorie diet and you're trying to lose weight. We're gonna be really conservative here and say that there's a 20% error. Just gonna do the maths for a minute. Ah, oh, yeah. You could potentially be eating 1200 calories or 1800 calories. That is a huge difference. That's why there is absolutely zero point in you counting your calories to the gram. The only way that you can get somewhat consistent is by eating the same thing every single meal, day in, day out. Uh, hello bodybuilders and fitness competitors. There's a reason why they do that, because it's the only way to be as consistent as you possibly can. That's why they eat dry chicken breast, brown rice and broccoli out of a Tupperware box daily. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a normal person. I like variety. I don't want to eat the same thing out of a Tupperware box every single day. <coughs> Even if you did that, it's still not foolproof. To me, that's just not enjoyable and it's not practical. I don't want to live my life that way and you don't have to either. Let's move on to floor number two, calculating calories out. So assuming we've calculated our somewhat inaccurate calories in, we have to now calculate how many calories we use or burn in a day. Let's say you walk a mile. Well, you're actually gonna use far less energy than someone else who also walks exactly the same distance but weighs more than you. But say you're lifting weights. How do you know how much energy you have burnt? Maybe you did it a little bit quicker than the next person. Maybe your mind-muscle connection is far stronger and you actually know how to contract the muscle than the person next to you who's got shit form but lifting heavier weights. How can you possibly calculate that? The answer? You can't. I don't know about you, but I legit feel like not only do I need a maths degree to figure out how many calories I need to eat in a day, but now I need a physics degree on top of that to work out how much energy I'm burning. Excuse me, can you just wait a minute while I get my calculator out? Yeah, no, I'm just calculating how many calories are in this banana. I'm just working out how quickly I walk to work today so I know how much calories I burned, yeah? <laughs> so that I can have that double mochaccino frappolino. Yeah, you know, that pinkity drinky shit, yeah, so good. No, 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 no. Here's the bottom line. There is no way that you can work out with any sort of precision or accuracy how many calories you're taking in, nor how many calories you're actually using. <laughs> Calorie in, calorie out fanatic will just say to you, Yeah, but that's why we have BMR and TDF and NEAT and EA. Which is basically just a whole bunch of other calculations to further confuse you. Apparently, all of those combined will just take out any discrepancies that we had earlier. But do they? <laughs> Because at the end of the day, all of those calculations are gonna be guesstimates too. Have you ever used an online calculator to try and work out what calories you should be on, what your BMR is, and what your resting energy expenditure is? Yeah, you get like five different answers, as if it wasn't confusing enough. Which calculation is right? Which one do I use? It doesn't need to be this complicated. I'm not gonna go through what all of these are. If you want to know, do a Google search, but let's just take BMR, which is your basal metabolic rate. Even that equation itself states that there is a 10% inaccuracy for these reasons. In this study of police officers doing shift work, it actually found that the accuracy in prediction of the equation was only 35%. All of these equations are based on your lean body mass as well. And how could you possibly know with any accuracy what your lean 
lean body mass is. You aren't just made of muscle or fat. You also have bone and organs. You're made of a lot of water as well. And no, you can't do those crappy little tests that you get at the gym. They are not accurate. And even if it was accurate, I mean, how practical is it? It's okay for a strength and conditioning academic in a science lab to tout that this is truth. But does it really apply to the real world? Does it apply to you as an individual? I don't know about you, but all this mass has given me hella anxiety. So here's what I say. Let those academics and bodybuilders crunch their numbers and eat their dry chicken out of Tupperware. There is a better way for you, my friend. Flaw number three, a calorie is a calorie is a calorie. <clears throat> or not. Basically, this means if you eat X amount of calories, more than you burn, you will gain Y amount of weight, no matter where the calorie comes from. And if you were to believe that this calories in versus calories out equation is foolproof, then yes, that would make sense. But in reality, this isn't the case. It doesn't matter what diet you follow. You could follow keto, paleo, you could be vegetarian, you could do OMAD, you could do, if it fits your macros, you could do absolutely any diet. If you eat too many calories, you will gain weight. But there have been many studies shown over the years that a fat-based diet compared to a carb-based diet, even with equal calories, performs better, with dieters losing far more weight. There are literally in excess of 60 studies spanning over 70 years. I'm not going to list them all here, but I just wanted to talk about one study in particular. This is the most recent that's come out and probably the strongest study to date. Five months into this study, the low carb group saw an increase in their resting energy expenditure by 200 calories a day. Whereas the resting energy expenditure of the high carb group actually decreased. Well, your resting energy expenditure is basically the amount of calories that you burn by doing nothing. So just by doing nothing, the low carb group was burning more calories than the high carb group. What this means for you in the real world is that following a low carb diet allows you to take in higher calories and still lose weight. I've experienced this myself when I was a bikini competitor prepping for my state championships, which I won and placed first, as well as the international bodybuilding competition, the Arnold's, where I placed second in my class. My calories never went below 1900 calories. That's really high for a fitness competitor compared to all the other girls who typically do anything from 1200 to 1500 and walk around like zombies. How can this even happen if we are to believe what all the science tells us that the only important thing when trying to lose weight is about your calories? Flaw number four, the burning calories mindset. This is probably the biggest contribution to perpetuating unhealthy mindsets around the foods that we eat and the exercise that we do. How many times have you justified eating that chocolate bar by thrashing yourself on the treadmill the next day? How many times have you resisted the urge to eat something fatty like butter or cream because you think it has too many calories and you'll need to do an extra 50 burpees in your HIIT class to work it off? This mindset is so unhealthy and it's the main reason why I discourage women from counting calories. But I, I get it. It is really hard to undo all of that conditioning from watching your mum follow low-fat diets when you were a kid and scolding you for wanting to spread more butter on your whole grain healthy toast to hearing over and over and over from weight loss companies on the TV and in the magazines telling you to watch your calories and teaching you a f***ing points system on a, a scale of good foods and naughty foods and rewarding you like you're some sort of dog. All this does is cement feelings of guilt and fear around food. And your doctors and dietitians are no better because when you're struggling with this and you're at a loss and you don't understand why you can't lose the weight even though you're doing everything right, they just tell you to move more and eat less. It's hard to undo all of that brainwashing when it's coming at you from all sides and backed by science. Now I tell you this because I want to show you just how flawed this system actually is so that you can ease up on this calorie thing and possibly reduce your anxiety around it.
stay with me, things are gonna get nerdy. A calorie is a unit of heat. And the way that the energy of a particular food is calculated is by burning it in a machine called a bomb calorie meter. Calorimeter? Calorie meter. Calorimeter? Calorimeter. 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 And then measuring the amount of heat that this particular food gives off. These are the numbers that end up on calorie charts, up on the back of food packaging to let you know how much energy is in each food so that you can track your intake. Can you see why people might have gotten scared of eating fats? Woo! Nine calories per gram, holy b****! No, no Susan, I, I am not gonna eat that cheesecake. Are you kidding me? Nine calories per gram? No. Oh my god, seriously? It's so good though, so good! Who gives a f about the sugar content though, right? You can see now why people are so scared of fats because they are the most calorific and if calorie restriction is the only way to lose weight then you can see what kind of a problem we have here. But there's clearly a very obvious flaw with this. We are not machines. I don't know about you but the last time I checked human bodies don't burn foods like this nifty machine over here. I mean, I'm pretty sure that when I ate my salmon, eggs and butter for lunch today, I didn't glow in the dark like E.T. Our digestive system is actually pretty inefficient. The chemical process that happens in our body when we eat our food is that our blood sugar oxidizes and breaks down to provide us with energy. When that happens, we get carbon dioxide. Now, we breathe out up to half of that CO2. We lose it in our breath. The other half we lose in our sweat and our pee and our poop. That's energy containing molecules right there. Literally in your poop that you didn't use. It would make sense then not to count this figure from your food in your initial calorie intake. Does a bomb calorimeter poop? No, of course not. It's a machine. So what about calorific naughty fats? Well, when you eat lots of fats, your body breaks that down into ketones. Fat-adapted people following a low-carb, high-fat or ketogenic diet use these ketones as energy instead of running off sugar like most carb-based dieters do. But you actually lose some of these ketones in your breath and in your urine too. And so, aside from losing some of these calories is that we don't actually use all of the food we eat to supply our body with energy. repair and make cells and enzymes and things like skin and hair and nails and blood. So the calories from this protein isn't used for energy. It's literally used to build and repair cells. So you shouldn't be counting these in your energy in calculation. Yes, some of it is used for energy, but some of it is also used uh, for the production of bile, for hormones, essential fatty acids are used for the brain and for the nervous system. So you shouldn't count this in your energy intake either. Basically, there is no accurate way for you to know from the protein and the fats that you eat, how much is not used for your energy intake. And so you can't allow for it either. And if you can't allow for it, there's no point in counting it. used to supply the body with energy, in which case all carbs should be counted, minus insoluble fiber. It seems pretty logical that carb restriction would be a far better approach than simply calorie restricting on a low-fat carb-based diet, providing you are not overeating. The problem with calorie restriction and following this calories in versus calories out equation, although it looks perfect on paper and the science might be true, doesn't mean that it's necessarily practical for you in the real world. There are many studies to show 
that with calorie restriction has a direct effect on your hormones. And while although it can show to reduce your insulin, some other important things happen too when you go on low calorie diets. Ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone, increases. That means craving carbs and sugar and constant hunger. Leptin, which is your satiety hormone, decreases. Basically, your brain doesn't tell you when you're full. And your cortisol levels rise, which is your stress hormone, which basically means you're going to be stressed as you're going to have mood swings, and you're going to be wired at night, which means poor sleep. And because of that, there's no way you're going to be able to have effective workouts. And it requires incredible amounts of willpower just to stay on track. And as a side note, no one talks about this, but it's very easy to become nutrient deficient when you're on very low calories. So why shoot yourself in the foot with low fat, low calorie restriction? What you eat, and more importantly, the quality of what you're eating, is far more important than merely focusing on calories. Now, I don't need to tell you that eating a diet full of junk food, processed carbs, refined sugars, and unhealthy trans fats is not good for you. But who would have thought that eating calorie dense whole foods like butter and fatty meats and fatty fish and avocado would actually help you lose weight? without having to obsess over a single calorie. Mainly because fats are satiating. They make you feel full. They give you sustained energy throughout the day. That means no hunger pangs two hours after eating. They also don't spike insulin. No lethargy, no cravings, no crashes. That makes it far easier to keep your calories under control when you're not fighting hunger, cravings, and fatigue. Like I proved in the earlier study, your resting energy expenditure actually increases, meaning you can allow for a bit of extra food and still lose the weight. And guess what that means? You're gonna have more energy to smash your workouts and burn more calories. The reason that low carb, high fat works so well for people is that it gives you freedom. It allows you to stress less over the numbers because all calorie counting does is keep you stuck and disconnected from your body. I do just wanna point out as well that food and exercise is not the only thing that you need to address if you're trying to lose weight and get healthy. If you haven't watched my weight loss video already, then you can watch that here. But above all, you need to work on your mindset and particularly how our emotions are tied to our eating behaviors. Overeating due to genuine hunger is, is one thing, but overeating due to uh, emotional issues, comfort eating or stress eating, any sort of orthorexic behavior, that needs to be addressed first before you even worry about what you look like. And this is the bottom line. The science of calories in versus calories out might look great on paper. It might be true according to scientists. If it's not practical, if it's not something that you enjoy or you can sustain for a long period of time, if you can't maintain it, then what's the point? Newsflash, you're not actually a calculation, you're a human being. Becoming intuitive with your eating and your exercise should always be the ultimate goal. If you wanna have balance in your life and maintain your results long-term. So use calories as a baseline just to gauge where you're at and how much food you're actually eating. And then throw it out the window because getting a grip on your body requires you to listen to it. And the danger with following any sort of weight loss protocol obsessively and only following the textbook rules is that you end up disregarding the humanness that makes you you. Health and fitness is not just about the foods that you eat and how you move your body in order to achieve some sort of body goal. It is first and foremost about feeling good in your body and in your mind. And also on a lasting note, I just want to point out to have realistic expectations uh, and striving to be a certain weight or look a certain way and comparing yourself to your favorite fitness influencer. It's not healthy and you're just never gonna be happy. There are no quick fixes. So you've got to start enjoying the journey. It's a learning curve. It's a process. Basically just stop obsessing over the numbers, whether it's your food or your waistline. You are more than your body. You are worthy. You are perfect just the way you are. Healthy 
is a state of mind. It is not just your dress size. Remember that. There you go, guys. I hope that cleared up some confusion for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And I will catch you very soon in another video. Bye. Thank you.